Hi and welcome back to my channel. I'm Nick the Geek and today I'd like to show you my 2021 working from home productivity desk setup. Like many of us, due to the pandemic, I've been working from home a lot over the past couple of years. And although I had a nice desk set up previously, I found that work was encroaching significantly into my personal productivity space. What I wanted to achieve this year was a space where I could work for the day job during the week and then be able to pack up and have no trace of it in my personal time, whilst also having a nice, clean, minimal setup for my own productivity. I enjoy photography and video editing, as well as being a hobbyist software developer, so I needed to make sure that the setup I chose had the best flexibility possible to allow me to do these hobbies in a comfortable and welcoming environment. Everything in this video has been bought with my own money. Nothing sponsored and this channel isn't currently monetized, so my opinions are my own as a consumer. So starting with the desk itself, I'd previously used a fixed corner desk layout. It was very large and had lots of room. However, by the end, it was so cluttered and by its nature, it forced you to stay sitting in a single position throughout the day. I decided to go for a sit stand desk for this particular setup. After a bit of research, I opted for the FlexiSpot E5B. Now this was bought as a frame only so I could add my own choice of worktop. The FlexiSpot E5B has a good range of height adjustment from 62 centimeters at its lowest to 127 centimeters at the highest. The control panel allows you to adjust it manually to get the height you want, or it has three preset functions which allow you to save your preferred heights and for the desk to go to them at the touch of a button. Load capacity is also good with the FlexiSpot E5B able to cope with up to 100 kilos, although the more weight you give it, the slower it will raise. The worktop is an IKEA Carlby kitchen worktop in Walnut. Now this one's the 186 cm wide version, and I wanted a wide worktop so I could fit in an ultra wide monitor on it without the desk looking tiny. The IKEA Carlby is a solid piece of wood, and fitting it to the FlexiSpot desk frame was really easy. After positioning it, it was just a matter of screwing it down, and that was it. It's nice, solid, and doesn't excessively wobble at higher elevations. Now I've deliberately tried to keep this desk as clean as possible, so there's not much actually on it. Starting with the monitor, I went for the 49 inch curved Samsung CRG9. Now this is a super ultra wide monitor, which I thought would be excellent for my use case. In my previous setup, I had three monitors side by side, two 24 inches at the edges and a 27 inch in the middle. Now with working from home, I had one of the screens permanently dedicated to my work laptop, but that meant that in the evenings and weekends, there was a single monitor of the three that was always off and just taking up space on my desk. Now this Samsung CRG9 49 inches essentially gives you the screen real estate of two 27 inch monitors side by side without having to compromise with bezels in the middle. It's got a picture by picture mode so it can accept two inputs at once. And the curve isn't as extreme as the one that you see on the Samsung G9 and it feels natural when you're looking towards the left and right extremes of the screen. In fact, when I'm in my office and have to use a 37 inch ultra wide without a curve, it just feels strange in comparison. I've mounted the Samsung CRG9 on an Ergotron HX monitor arm. The stand on the CRG9 is quite large and the feet extend quite far out into the desk. As the CRG9 is quite heavy and the curved nature makes it rather front heavy, most normal monitor arms you can find on Amazon or eBay can't quite cope with that weight, so you need something a little more heavy duty. Although the Ergotron HX is quite expensive at a couple of hundred pounds, it can cope easily with the CRG9 and keep it where you want it. Above the Samsung CRG9 is my LG 27 inch 4K monitor. Now this was the centerpiece of my previous setup and it's so nice I needed to find a way of integrating it into this setup. I've simply mounted it to the desk using my previous triple monitor arm, but I've removed the other two mounting points for the old monitors on that arm. It sits high up on the desk and I don't tend to use it too much, but it's good for having Spotify or photo editing or for viewing video output in Final Cut. Now also mounted on that monitor arm is my Logitech Brio webcam. This is used for the obvious video conferencing, Zoom calls, daily stand-ups and all that usual working from home stuff. It's mounted on a magic arm, which I got from around uh, 20 pounds on Amazon. And that just allows me to have it positioned exactly where I need it. On the other side of the LG monitor is my Rode NT-USB mini microphone. 
I'm not a professional editor by any stretch, and I don't stream on Twitch, but I do value good audio quality. And for the price, the Rode NT-USB Mini was a good way to get excellent audio at a low cost. I've mounted the Rode NT-USB Mini on a cheap boom arm from Amazon. Now that stays out of the way most of the time, and I can move it closer when I need it. Speaking of audio, sound is provided by a pair of Edifier R1700 BTS speakers. Whilst these are Bluetooth capable, I use a wide connection to my computer. I'd previously been using a Logitech speaker setup along with a subwoofer, but as I'd moved to a sit-stand desk setup, the cable management would have been a pain to deal with. So I wanted something compact and located on the desk. The sound quality from the Edifier R1700 BTS is great, really nice and crisp, if not lacking in the bass that I personally enjoy. However, for my use case of just listening to music while I work, they're perfect, and I have headphones if I want them, and a Dolby Atmos setup in my gaming stroke movie space if I want something a little punchier. As an iPhone user, I also have a MagSafe puck, and that's tucked out of the way, and that's for the times I need to charge my phone or my AirPods Pro. For mechanical hard drive storage, I have a Lacey D2 Professional 8TB external hard drive. Now this is what I use to store my Lightroom library, as well as my processed photos. Using its USB connection is quicker than running the library from my NAS, and let's face it, you're not supposed to do that anyway. For input, I'm using the Logitech MX keys for Mac. I've been through quite a few keyboards in my time, and I've settled on this one for now. It's comfortable, nice to type on, and has really nice backlit keys for when I'm working in darker conditions. As I'm now predominantly Mac based, I wanted a keyboard with the specific Mac keys layout, rather than repurposing my old Logitech K780 multi-device keyboard, which has got Windows keys predominantly displayed. The mouse is a Logitech MX Master 2, which I've had for a few years now. I see no point in upgrading to the MX Master 3 just yet. This MX Master 2 has got everything that I need. I've also got the Apple Magic trackpad, and that comes in handy for gesture control or swiping through timelines in Final Cut and so on. All of this is on top of an oversized mouse pad I picked up from Amazon for less than £20. It's edge illuminated and just adds a little bit of a nice contrast in darker lighting. Going under the desk, I've tried to manage the cabling as much as possible. I don't like seeing cables, and the very nature of a sit-stand desk makes cable management that much harder. I don't claim this to be tidy, or even a decent attempt at cable management, but I don't see them in day-to-day -day use, and that's all that matters. There's a single plug extension cord, which all of the equipment and the desk itself plugs into, and that means that I've only got one cable trailing down from the desk to go into a wall plug socket. The computer itself is the M1 Mac Mini. I bought this not long after they came out. Now, I'd always fancy trying some iOS development, and the price of the M1 Mac Mini was cheap enough for me to buy one as an experiment to see if I could get on with it. I've always been a Windows user and have built my own PCs, so it was an interesting experiment to try switching to the M1 Mac Mini. But it was so good that my PC quickly became redundant. The M1 Mac Mini is mounted in a caddy and bolted to the bottom of the desk to keep it out of the way. Obviously, with it being an M1 Mac Mini, it's lacking in ports, so I'm also using the OWC Thunderbolt 4 dock to give me some of those much needed ports back. Again, this OWC Thunderbolt 4 dock isn't cheap at a couple of hundred pounds, but it is quite an essential purchase. The only thing I don't like with it is that the main Thunderbolt input is at the front of the dock, meaning you're always going to have a cable visible, but that's a minor annoyance on an otherwise excellent product. Rounding off the bits under the desk, I've also got a SanDisk Extreme Pro 1TB portable NVMe SSD. Now this is used mainly for video editing and taking away with me to hold photos when I'm on a photography trip. I tuck it under the desk, buried amongst the cables most of the time. Finally, when I'm not standing at the desk, I'm sitting on my Herman Miller Logitech Embody chair. I love this chair. I'd previously been using a secret lab Omega for a couple of years, but I'd found that by the end of the working day my back was in agony. Spending so much time working from home meant that I needed to get something different. It was a really hard decision to spend over a thousand pounds on an office chair, but this Herman Miller and body was completely worth it. It's really nice and comfortable, has a really wide base, which is good, as I like to tuck a leg under when I'm sitting. And the backrest is adjustable and really flexible. It absolutely encourages and allows you to move about when sitting. It also came with a 12 year guarantee, so I'm hoping it's the last office chair I'll ever buy. And that rounds off my working from home and productivity desk setup. What do you think? Leave a comment below. 
If there's something you'd like to see in more detail, then let me know. Or is there something that you'd change if it were you? I'd love to hear from you in the comments. And don't forget, if you like this video, then please consider leaving it a thumbs up. And please subscribe if you'd like to see more from me. Thanks for watching.